All right, I'm going to just show you some quick concepts around doing clothes or cloth um, when rigging a character. This can be as complicated or as simple as you as you like it to be. I'm making this a little bit more complicated because this particular character for this film I'm working on will be present quite a bit and it has a lot of it is possible that he'll change a lot depending his movements might change a lot and really depends on what the director thinks of the animation and so one one problem I always have is when I animate characters is their clothing and if I finish a walk cycle or a whole bunch of particular movements and the director doesn't like the direction it's going and they want the, the timing changed or something different I have to go back in and reanimate all the cloth so what what I have happening right now is as the leg goes back the clothing stretches in the back end of of his body and then as his leg moves forward it, it stretches out it will stretch out but it's there's a shift happening on his whole body like it's almost feels like his hips are moving and one thing I find that's a, a real a real problem with puppets is they look really stiff sometimes. Uh, they can they can look super stiff, which can be great if that's what you're going for, but I'm not going for that. So how do you make these things happen? Um, this cloth appears to be reacting to his leg, but if I move it further than I have it designed for, then it breaks. So it's actually really quite simple. For the torso, I have a number of pins. I have the pins all up and down his spine. And they're all being tracked, they're all tracking to null objects, just like I showed you in the first tutorial. But I also have a couple of other pins floating around. One in the front of his stomach, one on his back. I have one on his butt here, of the fabric, and I have one here. And I'll probably end up putting one around here eventually as well too. So what's happening here is that these are linked to other null objects. This one's called torso base back. And then I have another, another couple, which are visible right now, um, let me just minimize all this stuff. I have butt and I have belly. So let's take a look at what's happening to these particular null objects. There's a bit of code attached to them. Nothing crazy. It's actually all fairly straightforward. Okay. So let's first look at his butt and his belly. So what do we have going on? And let's get rid of this. We don't need that there. Okay. So I'm going to expand this out so it's easy to read. Um, and let's zoom out a little bit so we can see what's happening. So, basically what I've done here is I've defined a couple of variables. So right now I have torso rotation. And torso rotation is linked to torso mid-01, which is up here. It's linked to the rotation, transform rotation value of torso mid-01. The way I would get this val value is if I had torso rotation as a variable I typed in, I could just grab this and I want to attach it to this. Oh, no, sorry, that attached it to the layer. Undo. I want to attach it to the rotation specifically. Okay, so now torso rotation, torso ROT equals the rotation value of torso mid 1. So then I have leg rotation. So I've typed in leg rotation, and I want to link that to the rotation of his right thigh, which is drag down and right thigh to rotation. Perfect. So that variable is now in there. So all I've built for actual code here is I've basically said position x is equal to position x. So this is transform.position0, which is the position value here, uh, plus torso rotation times 3 minus leg rotation. So the x value of this pin will be influenced by the rotation value of the leg and the the torso, the pelvis, or sorry, the um, the torso mid two, or I mean torso mid one. So what does that what does that do? Well, I have butt here influenced by it. So what happens? I'm subtracting the value of this rotation of this rotation from torso mid one. So as you see, torso rotation times three is being added to the x value and it's being multiplied by 3 to make it even stronger and then I'm subtracting leg rotation from it. So let's see, as I rotate the stomach forward, what's happening? You can see this value here went from negative 300 to negative 268. So it's increasing, it's adding 22 times 3 to this value. So what that's doing is that's making this null object push backwards, okay? 
All right, so that's all well and good. So let's have a look at what the leg's doing to it. So essentially, if I were to look at this, it's saying we're going to subtract the leg rotation from it. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. Let's put this down to zero. So the current value of the torso butt position of the null object is negative 371. As I rotate the thigh in, in a negative direction, negative 64 degrees, now this value is negative 307. Okay, so let me just put this back to zero. If I wanted the opposite to happen, um, I'm just pulling it, pulling it forward because I want it to feel like his pelvis is rotating slightly. But if I wanted the opposite to happen, of course I could just easily, instead of subtracting leg rotation, I could add leg rotation to it. So let's see what that does. So now I'm adding leg rotation. So now the opposite's happening. His butt's ballooning out and it's sucking in when I do this. Not really what I want. Okay. So this is a really manual way of doing it, but it does work. Uh, there's a little bit of experimentation to, to try as in to use what kind, what level of multipliers you might want to use to make these things react. I have the same thing happening to the torso belly, exactly the same style of code. Um, there's just a difference between whether I'm subtracting or adding some of the values. And what this is doing is if you look at the stomach, this, this null object right here, as the leg is bending forward, his belly's popping out a little bit. The same thing happens when I rotate his um, torso midsection here. As this rotates down, this null object pushes out. So let's see what happens if I turn the code off on it. Look how much, look at what his stomach does, it sucks in, which doesn't really make sense for that part of his body that it would suck in. I could more see that happening up higher, but not here, or down lower, but not right there. So, which, that is why I added that code to it. So as he pushes his belly down, that null object pulls out. And so it just makes it so I don't have to manually do all this, and if I change something in the animation, I don't have to go back through and fix all these keyframes, when applying this code really doesn't take too long. It's it is a bit time consuming in getting the pins positioned exactly where you want them. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show is there's a little part in here um, with his leg when his thigh moves, which is what's happening to the back of his, his jacket here. So I put a little null object on this article of clothing here. And let's have a look at how that's being affected. So that's called torso base back. And I don't know exactly why I'm calling it that. It's just Okay, so this has a little bit more of a complex code, not that much more, just a little bit. So I'm essentially doing the same thing. I've defined two variables. I have torso rotation, which is exactly the same as before. I'm calling up torso mid zero one. So I'm measuring the rotation of torso mid zero one. So that's having a direct impact on this. I have leg rotation from right thigh two, right here, right thigh, leg rotation, right thigh two. And that's again, right down here, um, right thigh two. I'm pulling that rotation value. And then, now I have one more thing. So, if I, um, what I, what I threw into the mix was this thing called cloth val. And this is, again, I've just defined my own variable. It doesn't mean anything other than I'm calling it the cloth value. It's the x value of the null object is, a, is equal to the x value minus the leg rotation times cloth value. Okay, so I'm subtracting the leg rotation, multiplying that by the cloth value. What does that do? Okay, so I have the leg right here, thigh right two. Let me just turn this on and minimize the amount of stuff we have going on here. Okay, so if I take this and I rotate this leg in a negative direction, what what let's let's review what the cloth value um, variable does. Okay, so it's basically saying here if the leg rotation is less than zero, so if this value is less than zero, cloth value is zero point five. So it's essentially saying that leg rotation when it's less than zero, I multiply it by zero point five. That means that this rotation will have very little impact on the position of this pin as it moves. As you can see, it's having a little bit of an impact. I don't want to get rid of all impact because any movement on the body affects the clothing and affects everything else. But when it gets into the positive zone, I want it to have a much stronger impact. So now I say, um, if, if the leg 
if the uh, leg rotation, by saying if it's less than zero, it equals 0 0.5. So that means if it's more than zero, cloth value jumps to four. So now I am subtracting leg rotation times four to make this cloth move a lot more. So if I, let's say I reduce this number right here, let's put it to two. See what happens? That number gets smaller. And if I were to put it to one, that would essentially be, that's just a one to one adding 45 to the x position or subtracting 45 from the x position of this null object. So I'm going to put it back to 4. Actually, let's put it up to like, I don't know, let's do 40. Let's see what that does. So again, once it hits positive zone, it doesn't do anything. But then once it hits into the negative, I'm adding a multiplier of 40 to every degree rotated. So I get this crazy acceleration coming out there. So anyways it's it's really simple it's a simple code it's a simple idea it's it's a little bit limited it's not like it has a collider detector or something but what it can do is it can save you a lot of time and it's really using some of the most basic code in ex in the expression editor so I'm going to continue working with this and I'll put up some more tutorials as the body comes together